Looks like it's Ibram X. Kendi again. It's the Bruhaha at Boston University, the piece in the New York Times, uh, in the Boston Globe pieces, uh, people speaking out, uh, disgruntled colleagues, uh, administrative review of the Center for Anti-Racism research. What I want to know is this. Why is there so much joy about what happened to Kendi? Not only among conservatives, but in the media, it's people of all stripes who are so happy to see that guy getting his butt kicked. What is all this joy about? You're joyous. Why? Uh, how do you know I'm joyous? Because you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a part of me that's saying it's about time. But not for the reasons that a lot of people are thinking. I don't, like, for example, I don't think he's a grifter. I don't think that he's been trying uh. to put one over on people. It's not a, that this mere criminal is being brought to justice. I don't think of it that way at all. Do you? Oh, John. I, I, I almost don't know what to say. But I'm going to, because we're friends, I'm going to pay you the respect of being honest with you. I mean, mm-hmm. that just feels like, it feels like a pose. The, the line that you are describing to me coming from you feels like a pose. Everybody is uh, schadenfreude. You know, everybody's enjoying the dis- disaster of this guy. Yep. They're crowing and they're whatnot. And I, I mean, sure. That's not very honorable. That's not very edifying, that kind of response. You know, chickens coming home to roost. What did Malcolm X say after the Kennedy assassination? You know, that kind of thing. That's cheap. That's that's not. And and I don't think that's where I'm coming from. But you, (laughs) instead of going to the uh, heart of the matter, which is an empty suit was elevated to an academic a guru position and a ton of money fell on him. And the whole thing fell about because he was an empty suit, which reveals the superficiality of the virtue signaling uh, mania that uh, ensued after George Floyd got killed in Minneapolis in 2020. There was never any there there. The emperor had no clothes. This is precisely Hans Christian Andersen's emperor's new clothes situation. This is the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. That's been revealed. Instead of that, you use your lofty position and your megaphone of influence to ask questions about the people who are happy to see the whole thing fall apart. It was rotten to the core. The whole thing was absurd. He was going to solve the racial inequality problem through anti-racist research. He's an empty suit. He doesn't know anything. That's been obvious from day one. So it's not about him. Right. It's about the institutions and about the mania of that moment. And by the way, the consequences of the mania of that moment are playing out in real lives all across this country. With cities overrun with ill-behaved people, with law enforcement apparatus being pulled back, with, with ridiculous ideology, with failed school systems, with mediocrity everywhere you look. Kendi is, is just a symptom of something that was very deeply and profoundly wrong. What about Black Lives Matter? What has become of them? What about ta Coates and Nicole Hannah-Jones? Yes, I will go there. What has become of them? They were going to go to Howard and build some kind of center. Where is it? I'm disappointed that you didn't go for the jugular. That's what I'm saying. Well, the thing is, who's jugular? Kendi is not an academic. He is not a scholar. And I don't mean that as a put down. I mean, that's not what he does. What he wants to be is an anti-racism activist. He happened to get a doctorate. And if you get a doctorate, it does open certain doors. That's understandable. But it's painfully clear from his CV, from frankly, just listening to him for about five minutes, that he's not an academic. And if you put it the right way, you could even say it to him and he might even agree. For it. He's out in society trying his version of trying to change real lives, but that's not a scholar. However, all of a sudden in 2020, he gets swept up into this institution where he's supposed to be supervising real research. You know, if you tried to have me administrate something, I would have that thing a smoking hole in the ground in two weeks. I would have no idea what I was doing. I don't want to do it. I get the feeling he's similar. He hadn't had any experience running anything, and he's not terribly interested in doing it. I, I feel him there, but he gets thrust into this position. Why would we expect him not to take it? Is he really supposed to say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not a real researcher, or I don't do what these people do. Who would, what would I be doing supervising these people? The jugular here is Boston University, 
Okay. The jugular is anybody in 2020 and thereon who has casually referred to him with terms like scholar and academic and intellectual. And it's clearly. What about the MacArthur Foundation? You don't want to sound like you're jealous, but frankly, that well, too. All what about the. Didn't he win a National Book Award? Yes, he did. And frankly, yeah. And so that's the jugular that you go for in that there is sometimes a lowered sense of what an academic is when it comes to what Black figure is going to be celebrated. I cannot be mad at Kennedy for that. I mean, he just got swept up into something where I think all of us would have taken the money. All of us would have taken the fame. All of this fell apart because he was chosen for something that he shouldn't have been chosen for. But why be mad at him? I don't know why defending him from anybody's anger is of concern to you, but you, you can keep your own counsel on that. Let me, let me just pause it. I'm not, as it were, mad at him when I point out that he's a fraud. When I, when I point out that he's an empty suit, that, as I said, he's a lightweight. OK, when, when I call attention to the vacuity and the emptiness <laughs> of the rhetoric, how to raise an anti-racist baby? Come on, come on. So, the plan is, so is, I, I'm not mad at him to, to, to say uh, you an embarrassment. You're an absurdity that, that that's simply a description. That's not accurate, Glenn. You can't call him an embarrassment or an absurdity when he was put into a position by other people. If anything, they made him make himself into an embarrassment. It wasn't his fault. If things were the way they ordinarily would be under normal standards of evaluation, he would be an obscure black studies professor teaching at some state university. That's what he was before all these things happened to him by chance. But he got swept up into something. How can you call that person an embarrassment when it's not, it's not his fault? The embarrassment is be you. I'm embarrassed for Boston University as a representative of what American higher education can be. In that well, they- then let's talk about that. I mean, because I agree with you that that's really the issue. And I, I'm not, I don't have a stake in uh, up or down on Kendi as such. I think his own biography and arc of his career speaks for itself. Why don't we talk about the institutional problem here? What they because did, as I say, it's not just it's not just BU. It's it's much broader than that. What BU did is an insult to Black intelligence. But let me let me change that because that's that's too mean to Kendi. What BU did <laughs> doesn't deserve it. What BU did is an oh, insult okay. to Black achievement. And the the best defense I can imagine they would have is that of course showbiz is part of things and showbiz does attract funds. But the idea that you, on the one hand, could be heading an anti-racist center that was so excellent 30 years ago, and that as if he is, was remotely capable of doing the same thing, he's utterly miscast, is a diminishment of, of blackness. The people who did that ought to be ashamed of themselves, frankly. What about the people who paid him 40 grand to show up and give a, a half hour long talk without a Q&A? Do you want to put them on the list of uh, people yes. to castigate? Yes. It, it almost feels like they're displaying that woman who was supposed to be George Washington's nursemaid and she was supposed to be 104 years old. It's like they're showing off a Negro. I don't have any problem with them taking the money if it's, if it's offered, but the idea that they would pretend that anything that that particular person has to say is worth that much money, it's an insult. It, it, it's making a black person a show in a way. And yeah, I, th- I think that's disgusting, but it's not him, it's them. 